Okay, so we're going. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to ask you is like, I mean, yeah. I know that you did initial research on theoretical aspects of XML. Yeah. So how did you get involved in working in XML and why? I mean, did you notice that it was going to be like the next big thing or you didn't know about that at that time? No, I didn't. It's a very good question. Yeah. I, I, before that, I was working on uh, the query language for complex objects. And of course, that uh, tableau looked uh, very much like uh, the, this is a good model for a lot of scientific data formats. So when we were looking at this, we then got interested in scientific data formats, and lots and lots of those around. And they were all very interesting. And actually, this complex object algebra proved quite successful uh, as actually as a query language for, 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 these, um, uh, for, for these formats. But there was one interesting one, which I have to mention, called ACEDB, which is a biological data, data format, which was... Uh, which didn't fit this model at all. It was that of a, a tree, uh, a tree structure uh, thing, which was, uh, uh, which had some interesting properties. It had lots of null values. You could have a schemaless structure and all these things. And so I actually got interested before XML, or before I knew about XML, in semi-structured data. And it was really under trying to understand models for semi-structured data which got me going on that. I have actually not made ma that many contributions to XML. I like to think that a lot of the work we did on semi-structured data motivated the subsequent development of query languages and things for XML. But, uh, but my interest was really in the precursor to XML, which is the semi-structured data model. Yeah. And I think people should still go back and look at those data models because uh, I actually think that XML is, although it's produced a lot of interesting work, has uh, two problems. One is that people put layers and layers of complexity on top of it, and it is, after all, just a format for serializing your data. That's what it's there for. And it's not necessarily a format for designing your data. I'm not sure that we should be building complicated data models for XML. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, if I were to, uh, you know, talk in a little more, in more depth, I think I could convince you that there are certain incompatibilities between what we want of a good data model and what we want of a serialization format. So uh, I, I have reservations about XML. First of all, that I don't think it is good for necessarily for database design. And I think we put far too much stuff into it. I think we should keep it very simple as a format for exchanging data. Yes. That's it. Yes. So it was, it was later than, I mean, after you were working on this semi-structured data, it was later that you discovered that it corresponded to what it... I, I didn't discover, other people did, and, and, and rubbed my nose at it, and I got a little interested in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, I see. So, uh, yeah, maybe, I mean, like, the second question has to do with uh, what you were talking. So, uh, there is, I mean, like, XML is kind of the big thing at this moment, but lots of other data are actually stored in different formats, right? I mean, you were talking about this linguistic data or yeah. biological data, yes. etc. So how, how do you think that things will go in the future? Do you think that we will see some kind of explosion of data formats or that uh, things will stabilize in some small number of them? I think they will stabilize. I see, uh, first of all, people who work on XML, even the people who do Right. You usually make some simplifying assumptions about the structure of XML. As you know, you, know, you often say, well, I'm not going to deal with a full DTD, I'm going to deal with a DTD, which has a... Yes. And once I see people putting these constraints on, they start to look quite close to uh, traditional models for uh, uh, data types, you know, things that you can build out of lists and tuples and union types and things like this, uh, with maybe some recursion as well. Uh, there is still this, uh, uh, so in that sense, it's no longer semi structured, it's a perfectly structured description. And I think we'll see it, in fact, people are implicitly using models of that nature, which I think are the right ones. There's still this semi structured element, you know, there's this idea that you can, um, uh, you know, you can just add edges as you please, add new attributes freely, and you're not constrained by a schema. And that area, I hate to say the word, but I think we have to start looking at the connection between database work and ontologies. Because I think there's going to be some 
some interesting developments there. So this is where I see the two things uh, developing. Uh, a, a sort of revival, which is already happening implicitly, of the more the structured forms where we tend to forget about serialization. Okay. And the connection with ontologies, which uh, are in some sense much more semi-structured or systems in which you can impose a structure. So, um, and, and in that case, uh, do you feel that we as data scientists, let's call it, should we give an overall account of what data is, or I mean, we should be dealing with particular problems of each data type in a sense? I mean, like, do you think that each data type has its own problems, or there is something much more general about it, about data itself? I, that I, again, it's a very good question. Um, I wish I could answer it properly. Uh, so, you know, people invited, invented this beautiful, this beautiful connection between uh, relational tables and logic. Other things were established with nested relations or complex objects. So some very elegant connections there brought out. Um, we've seen also some very elegant work in connection with, with serial structures. We uh, find them. XML. I wish I could say. Oh, and then, uh, for example, there are things like arrays, which I widely use, which don't quite fit in with anything. Yes. I mean, people have tried several times to deal with it. Another, I think, very interesting topic is trying to deal with streams. People have tried to deal with that, the programming language people. This is an area where we can learn a lot from the programming language community. Looked quite interesting. Quite a lot of streams, but I think we should go back with our database spectacles on and look at streams and look at what optimizations we can do. Whether there's a nice algebra for need, manipulating streams. Maybe but but do you feel somehow that we're missing an overall account, or that it's it hasn't been necessary yet? I mean. I, I I don't think we're going to ever get a grand unified theory of all data types. I think we're going to draw out connections between the two, understand how they interact with with each other, um, we'll be more comfortable, we'll have better and better languages for manipulating them. Um, I, I'm not sure that we will find some sort of grand unifying theory of everything, if that's what you're asking for. We should just continue looking. I think this is very important.